Why do our political and media ecosystems treat some things as deserving of scandal, of outrage, and others not? Now, this has crossed my mind, and I know the minds of some of you as well. Ever since a storm broke over a woman throwing orange confetti at George Osborne, our former chancellor who helped ruin the country, and his wife, who is also his former chief of staff, Theo Rogers. Now, Just Stop Oil were originally blamed for this stunt because the confetti was orange, which is the colour they are associated with, but they denied it was them, though they defended the right of the protester, who we actually know absolutely nothing about. We don't know anything about her or her identity. Now, I went on Good Morning Britain this morning, which I always love doing. It's always a, always a privilege, but as you can hear, I did have to struggle a bit to make my point, which is fine. I'm a big boy. Uh, I can take it, but do hit do hit the like button and subscribe if you appreciate my efforts. The reason I get frustrated That's about it. it is what we get outraged about in politics and what we don't. <laughs> there was a academic study by the University of Glasgow uh, which found that because of austerity policies pursued by George Osborne, there were excess deaths. That's deaths. You're losing but, the room, Owen. Do you know what, Andrew? My job here, like your <laughs> Sorry. job, losing the room. Listen, <laughs> it's my job is to say what I, I, know. What I You're think. You're losing the room. Not what I think is No, I'm going to say this. No, no, no. talk about Thea yeah. Rogers, ah, who's a woman right, okay. who worked for the BBC. Okay. She worked for Tony Blair. She I am going to Guys. She's yeah. getting married. Ed, I know your best buddies with this guy now. I know your best buddies with this guy and all the rest. We did ask you in for your opinion. I know. Let's allow him to state it. Okay. I'm saying. Well, I'm best buddies not, here's a okay. shovel. Because, here's his, a shovel. because of his no. policies. Debating points aside. Am I allowed to say anything? Yes, you are. Hi, Go ahead. On. No, we can just, you can carry on. Debating points aside. Excess deaths of 330,000 people. 330,000 people who suffered premature deaths because of austerity policies imposed by George Osborne. Do you think now, this now, protester was an austerity protester? We don't, we don't literally know nothing about this protester. My point is. Except what, they used orange confetti. What we, what which we get, is what we get out, climate change. What we get outraged about in British politics <laughs> are things like orange confetti rather than the human consequences. How many families' days were ruined by George Osborne slashing the benefits of families? You can say all you want, but I find that more egregious. When I spoke, to, I'll give you an example. I spoke yeah, to a mum. No, no, I'm going to say this quickly. They're, they're I spoke to a mum. Ed, I spoke to a mum. I spoke to a mum when uh, a few years ago she had a daughter. Her daughter died. She had a spare room as a consequence under the law of the bedroom mm -hmm. tax imposed by George Osborne. Mm -hmm. Now you and I, you might find that you might think, well, that's just politics and policies, and that's different, and we can mm -hmm. disagree. And throwing orange confetti is a real outrage. I am personally more outraged by the human consequences of what politicians do. Do you think you? Now, Ed Balls was actually at the wedding, so here's what I said to him about it. And genuinely, do you think it was ruined I, I because of some orange confetti? I really don't think so. I'm sorry. I don't think that's you actually you... proportionate whatsoever. Okay. You said you had a lovely day, you had a great day, and it clearly was she a planned happy it. occasion. She planned it for months, the big and white frock. Yeah. Yeah. Big you know, day. I, it's I, a big I, day I, for her. I, I don't I, think you need to be, you know... I think you raised I, an interesting, you raised a really interesting oh, thank point. thank you. No, I do. Oh, uh, that's why you're here. I don't, I don't think it's interesting at all. I think it's no, boring I know. and you're, tedious. You're now bored. that you've lost you're, it. We can't, right, okay. we can't, you can't, you can't. stay quiet for a moment. <laughs> I just want to ask. So, Owen, that, it's an interesting thing. So, if somebody... It's a bit like when Matt Hancock went into the jungle. So, a lot of people outraged mm. because of the way he dealt with COVID, mm -hmm. that he could possibly go into the jungle and be treated as an entertainment figure yeah. and get as far as he did. And he yeah. obviously proved popular and he got voted, you know, as far through as he did. If somebody does something politically that you disagree with, should they be punished in perpetuity it's, for that? It, and then any good moment that they have needs to be spoiled and wrecked because you believe that their political policies cause it, it's more damage to yeah, people. It's more the case that I don't think politicians who do very, very terrible things and destroy the lives of huge numbers of people face accountability. A really famous example that I always really does my head in is George W. Bush. George W. Bush invaded Iraq, hundreds of thousands of people died. He got reinvented as a cuddly statesman. But, you know, what, there's this cuddly moment where he hands a sweet to Barack Obama's wife. Mm. How, you know, and he's not vulgar like Donald Trump. I just feel over and over again, there are people like George Osborne, who I don't think any politician has caused so much ruin in this country than George Osborne. Mm -hmm. The decimation of the welfare okay. state, which plunged huge numbers of people but, into poverty but, oh, and misery. In a democratic system, of course, we have the ability to vote on that, mm -hmm. don't we? To get rid of people, to, to kick people out if we disagree with them. Not to kind of have a personal persecution uh, complex against them, but again, to continually again, destroy 
them and their magic moments. But, I don't. I just think that. But again, just people what, are human beings, aren't they? Just that one example I gave of a mum who lost her beloved daughter and then had to pay the but, bedroom but, tax because she had a spare it, bedroom. That is far, 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 far worse yeah. than orange confetti on your wedding day. Yeah, and it I know it's ridiculous that, woman that wasn't to say the this. woman protesting. No, but we don't know anything about the circumstances of this one. We literally don't what, even know who she is. Now, Ed Balls raises the terrorist far-right murder of the Labour MP, Joe Cox. Let me just play this clip to begin with. A member of parliament to me um, was Joe Cox, who was the MP for mm -hmm. Batley, and people from the right stirred up on the basis of their views, issues which were kind of terrible in their view about um, the way in which um, she and uh, right. the Labour government in the past had treated um, people and issues, and she lost her life. Uh, and I just uh, think you have say, to be incredibly can, careful can I say, to get into a world where mm, if we disagree with people... We take it we out on them to personally. Because mm. some people take that to terrible and, and, can yeah, I just, and it's OK to be civil and disagree. Uh, can, I say, can I just say, can I respond to that? It could have been, been something else other than confetti, oh. couldn't it? Mm. That's how close she I, got, I do, th I do think we need to be careful here when we're talking about that's, civility and politics. That's what I'm saying. And far-right violence, OK? What you're talking about there is a neo-Nazi. A neo-Nazi mm. who was driven by fascism. And we had another Labour MP, Rosie Cooper, a, a neo-Nazi who wanted a machete her to death. And uh, we've had far-right terrorists. And, and, Look, and, I've been being on where a neo-Nazi got sent to prison for three years. David Amos I don't, so I don't take it... to a far-right Sorry? Terrorist. I said David Amos didn't lose his life to a far-right No, right no, no, he didn't. And actually, the, those circumstances are very specific, actually. But also... But, Okay. But what we're talking about... But it was about, about hate, but, uh, look, which then if, becomes, if I'm on, look, if then, we're talking then about, an outlet. I, I got beaten up by a neo-Nazi mm. on my birthday, and they were sent to prison for nearly three years. That's a terrible... I'm not going to conflate that with issues of civility. That's about far-right violence. Mm. And I think it really undermines... responsibility. I think it belittles the issue to bring that well, to conflate the two. Yeah, but... ho oh, hum. Now, uh, you know, the terrorist murder of Joe Cox was a sickening, nauseating event. It really was. One of the things that troubles me, has troubled me since the terrorist assassination of this Labour MP, is how the right lessons were not learned. The lesson should have been about the rise of a far right of an increasingly violent disposition, not about whether people are too rude to members of parliament. They are very separate things. You can say, and it's a perfectly legitimate argument, to say that incivility in politics is bad, it degrades democratic norms, those sorts of things. I have a problem when we end up tone policing those who suffer oppression and injustice, talking in often very understandably emotional terms about their experiences and civility is used to shut that down. But it really belittles, I think, the seriousness of the far right to conflate a middle-aged woman throwing orange confetti at a wedding and the terrorist murder by a far-right terrorist of a Labour MP. Now, given civility in politics was raised, Ed Balls did raise an important point in that context. And I've been deeply angered by things George Osborne's done. I was deeply angered by the depth of the police cuts. I hated the way in which he stigmatised people claiming tax credits and claimed that somehow people on tax credits were sitting behind the curtains, lazing around. Yeah, he whipped up hatred against people... some of the most vulnerable people in society. No, 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 but... but... You don't need to tell me that because I know that. Yeah, but I, what I don't I like about him, Ed is, is I, I think have, the case in point is you having a well, podcast been, with him now where it's all kind of buddy and, you know, we're best I mates think. and all the rest of it because I think it, under, it undermines how serious what he did is. Well, you I, know, as an I, example, I, I, I the coalition... I what you say, but I think it's possible, Owen, to be civil to people and disagree. Right, right. Well, yeah, but I talk about civility. Yeah. You just mentioned an issue about mm. civility there. Mm. And I, that's a really good point about the way George Osborne whipped up bigotry against people who didn't have a voice. Yeah, you know, and here's the thing, because... Politicians whip up bigotry and hatred against refugees, migrants, Muslims, benefit claimants, which is particularly relevant in the case of George Osborne, as Ed Bulls notes, trans people. And there's this constant invective rained down on people who suffer very difficult lives. And what that does is fuel hate crimes. It legitimises those in wider society who hate these groups, uh, and it makes them feel they have a licence to act on their hatred. It encourages and nurtures bigotries and hatreds. Um, but we don't include that, do we, when we talk about civility? Instead, it becomes about powerful people in politics who suffer being, you know, rudeness. Um, and I think that's a problem. And I think that's what frustrates me about all of this. There has been no reckoning over George Osborne, who is treated as a sage-wise political commentator who we're supposed to show deference towards. 
no accountability and instead was supposed to be upset because of some orange confetti rather than about the ruinous consequences of his policies which as i've said have been linked to a surge in excess deaths of well over 300,000 of our fellow citizens because of his austerity policies. I would conclude by saying, as I said on Good Morning Britain, a bit of perspective is needed here. Please like, subscribe, do support us on patreon.com forward slash I'll see you in a bit.